Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, August 29th. Today's topic is Remind, your communication tool for back to school. Your show hosts are Peggy George, Lori Moffitt, and Tammy Moore. Our special guests are Jordan Pedraza and a panel of Remind Connected Educators. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, and she's going to introduce Jordan for us. Well, hello, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is in your time zone. We're so glad you're here, and we're very excited <clears throat> to be able to share Remind with all of you today. We have had many of you over the course of our webinars sharing Remind as a resource that you love and use, and we decided it was way past time for us to actually feature this tool. So if you're not familiar with it, you'll know all about it when you leave today. And you'll get to hear from a terrific panel of educators who are going to be sharing how they use Remind. That might give you some ideas of things that you could do that you may not have tried yet. I want to say welcome to Jordan Pedraza, who is here with us. She's the community leader at Remind. And it is an EdTech startup that provides a messaging app for teachers to communicate with students and parents and community and anyone you'd like to communicate with. Jordan has worked in the EdTech space for almost 10 years and has experiences in higher education, K-12, policy research, and international settings. Before Remind, Jordan led community with Google for Education and helped universities, K-12 schools, and ministries of education adopt various Google tools. As you can see, Jordan is deeply passionate about helping communities explore and adopt technology for new learning models and creativity. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Jordan, who will introduce the rest of the panel and answer our newbie question. And Jordan, we'd like to hear you tell us why you think it's important for schools to use digital communication with parents and teachers. Awesome. Hi, everyone. This is Jordan Pedraza uh, from the community team at Remind. Um, I'm based in San Francisco, and it's amazing to see so many uh, local Bay Area uh, folks like myself in the webinar today, but also great to connect with everyone else around the world. So I love this question. Um, obviously, it reminds this is something we really care about. But on a personal level for me, uh, I think what most excites me about education technology is that it allows us to do things in new ways we weren't able to do before. So in thinking about this question, you know, why do I think it's important for schools and teachers to use digital communication with parents and teachers or students or, or other community members? Well, I think, you know, most importantly, it's reaching people where they are. Um, you know, the nice thing about our day and age here is that we have a lot of tools we can use. There's email, you know, we all have a lot of phones, there's a lot of social media apps and, and tools out there. Um, but I think it's, it's easy to kind of get lost in the clutter. You know, things fall through the cracks and sometimes it's hard to cut through all the noise. Um, but, you know, when you're using tools like Remind or whatever tool you choose, uh, you can at least reach people where they're at. Um, so then you can make instant connections, you can coordinate effectively, um, you can really give your community members a voice and really work with them um, in lots of different ways, even if you do have uh, kind of busy schedules and there's lots of things going on. Um, so I think it's a strong way to connect with everyone. You know, it's still a new and different way than what we've done before, uh, but it's very exciting, especially when we think about the new generations coming into our classrooms with students. Uh, you know, most of them are having their own devices, um, either at home or at school, and, and also parents are getting their own devices too. So it's important to think about uh, how can we connect with them outside of our classroom walls and also while we're at school together. So um, let's get started with um, our actual presentation. So 
Uh, for those that are not familiar with Remind, uh, you can always learn more about us at Remind.com. Um, and then also we're on Twitter at RemindHQ. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to tweet us or contact us at any time. Um, and thanks again for everyone joining today. We're really excited to talk about Remind for Back to School. So a brief agenda for what we're hoping to cover today. Uh, first, we wanted to introduce ourselves so we can um, just share our backgrounds and uh, and then we'll move on into an overview of Remind, what's it about and, and how can it be used. Um, and then we'll hear from our great panel of educators. We'll have two teachers and one principal, uh, Tiffany, Sean, and Anthony, uh, and they'll share how they've used Remind in different contexts. And then we'll open the floor up for Q&A discussion. So Peggy and uh, and the team already introduced myself, but um, just again, you know, I'm Jordan, uh, leading community and growth at Remind in San Francisco. Uh, there's my Twitter handle too, Jordan Pedraza, if you want to follow and connect with me. Um, and as I said, uh, my background has been in ed tech for almost 10 years now. Um, I've worked in a lot of different contexts around community with higher ed, K-12, internationally. Um, and I'm just most excited about supporting teachers and students and parents and other staff in making the most out of technology to create wonderful learning experiences and opportunities. Uh, I guess I'll let Tiffany, Anthony, and Sean quickly introduce themselves and say hello. Hi, uh, my name is Tiffany Kanengeiser. I am a second year teacher at William Penn High School in Newcastle, Delaware, but I live in Philadelphia. I teach 11th grade English language arts and journalism, and I love tech. Good morning. My name is Anthony Silk. I am a teacher at the Harker School, a private high school in San Jose. I've been here for 12 years. I teach in the upper school, mathematics, mostly calculus. I am retired Navy, if you're wondering where that stupid Twitter account name came from. Hello, this is Sean Gaylord. I'm the lead learner and principal for John F. Kennedy High School in Winston-Salem. North Carolina and just really excited to share and learn with others about Remind. Thanks. Awesome. And one thing I wanted to point out is Tiffany, Anthony, and Sean are very special to us because they are Remind Connected Educators. Um, and that basically means they are really passionate leaders in their communities um, seeking to make an impact uh, with Remind and other tools that can benefit benefit us at school and in our classrooms and beyond. So thanks so much uh, for Tiffany, Anthony, and Sean for sharing their stories with us today. So moving right along, um, before we kind of get started in talking about what is Remind and how it can be helpful to you, um, I thought it would be helpful to take a step back and reflect how we communicate today. So as I mentioned before, there's a lot of tools we can use. Some are digital and some are not. Um, so some ways might be in person, some ways might be in paper. Um, and what are the challenges with these forms of communication? Just kind of take a minute to think about that. And feel free to share in the chat window. Um, but here at Remind, you know, we hear um, a lot of challenges that, that teachers and school leaders face when communicating with everyone. Um, with non-digital forms, you know, sometimes it can be helpful to have something printed out and handy, but, you know, flyers and handouts can easily get lost, especially in the shuffle with backpacks and, and kids going between school and home. And then with other digital forms like email and websites and blogs, sometimes updates can fall through the cracks there when everyone's inboxes get busy and it's kind of hard to keep track of uh, what posts and what information that you need to stay on top of. And then we've also heard stories where phone calls or in-person meetings can take a lot of time. You know, if we're trying to reach a lot of students and parents or each other, it's hard to meet with every single person as much as we want. So there's a lot of you know, opportunities in this day and age, but definitely some challenges with current ways that we may communicate. But the good news is, as I said before, most of us have phones now. You know, 80%, 87% of the world's population now owns a mobile phone, and that's going to continue to um, increase. And then also, specifically in the US, we're seeing a lot more students use uh, their phones for texting, and they say they really love it. Um, so, you know, when we're thinking about reaching our communities where they are, they're on their phones. And we've also seen this apply to uh, teachers and parents, too. And the other exciting thing is that there's research showing how texting impacts education. 
So seeing little bite-sized reminders or messages um, can really reinforce or just help people navigate um, the concepts and tools and resources they need to learn. So Stanford University conducted some research earlier this year on early literacy text uh, messaging. Uh, and this was a program in a preschool with parents. And they found that for parents who receive texts, parent engagement increased at home by 40%, and also increased engagement at school by 25%. And then ultimately, most importantly, this helped to boost student literacy by 15%. So beyond just a tool for communication and reminders, texting and mobile messaging can be a powerful learning tool. So now, where does Remind fit into this picture? And how can we be a tool for communication and learning? So there are a lot of popular benefits that teachers tell us about Remind all the time. Uh, but I would say there's three main ones that always come up all the time for us. So first, safety. Safety is really important. Uh, with Remind, no one ever sees your phone number and you don't see theirs. So we don't have to worry about people having your personal cell phone number or home line. And then secondly, we archive every message uh, that's sent and every chat. So if you ever need a transcript or if you ever need to flag anything, that's all available, included in the product. Secondly, we strive for simplicity at Remind. You can sign up in 15 seconds, and we make sure to keep the tool simple and easy to use for anyone. Thirdly, we make sure that it's as accessible as it can be. The teacher can sign up by installing the app on either iOS iPhones or Android phones, or you can just visit the web at remind.com, and then students or parents or whoever you're sending messages to can always choose how they receive messages. So we know a lot of people prefer SMS text messages. They can choose to join your class and get updates that way. Some people prefer the mobile app, so they can get notifications that way. Or some people still prefer email, and that's another way to get updates. So this is really important to us because we know that not all families have the same kinds of access to smartphones or computers or internet access on the go or at home. So this way, by giving everyone a choice, we can make sure that everyone is still connected. And speaking of this theme of choice and connecting, we also introduced a new chat feature this year um, that allows for two-way communication. So this means that teachers can choose whether students or parents or their fellow colleagues can reply to their messages that they send out. And this can either be done uh, in a one-to-one -one or a group setting. You can chat with up to 10 people at once. And then with office hours, you can choose when you're available to receive these chats. And you can also turn on chat uh, on or off at any time for any class. So just to point to a, a little bit on Remind's adoption thus far. So it was started by our co-founders, uh, Brett and David Kopp. And they're actually brothers. Um, and you know they were reflecting on their experiences as students and, and their relationships with teachers. And they thought of, you know, how can we make teachers' lives easier? How can we help them communicate so we can really improve educational experiences? So we started in about 2012. And we've grown a lot since then. To date, we have over 25 million teachers, students, and parents who use Remind around the world. And Remind is actually actively used in uh, over 75% of US school districts. And then internationally, we're also seeing use grow in countries like Brazil, Spain, the United Kingdom, and Australia. The other nice thing about Remind, and this is going back to our themes of access and community, it really works for a lot of different other members of the community. It's not just for teachers, students, and parents, um, but everyone else can really benefit too. So for example, we know that teachers oftentimes are also coaches or activity leads at their schools. And Remind is a great tool for communicating with sports teams and bands and clubs and organizations. And we've also seen Remind be used uh, as a tool for school leaders, like principals and administrators and superintendents, to share school-wide or district-wide announcements and updates with the whole community. And this is most important for us. So we have kind of four running themes that we actually paint on our wall in our offices in San Francisco. Um, and one of them is, is impact. So for us, you know, when we hear countless stories of Remind's impact for teachers and students and parents in schools, 
you know, we, we are really excited to hear that. You know, that's, that's personally what keeps me, you know, so excited to come into work every day. When we hear stories of uh, forming new relationships and connections, you know, sharing information more effectively and using Remind as uh, new possibilities for learning um, and collaboration and creativity in the classroom. Uh, we also see that the majority of our teachers come from public schools. So, you know, Remind is completely free and uh, we give you a lot of choice in how you want to use the tool. So that's really exciting to hear that, um, you know, you don't need a lot of tools or resources to get up and running and use this tool. And then also when we surveyed our community this year, uh, over 50% of our teachers said they saw improvements in homework completion rates. And then over 60% said they saw increases in parent engagement. So we've heard lots of stories around, you know, oh, before it was really hard for me to connect with my parents, you know, get them to be able to come to conferences or events. Um, and, and then with Remind, you know, they were able to send out uh, updates and announcements, um, you know, reaching parents where they are, even if they're on the go, even if they're, you know, kind of having their own lives and schedules. Um, usually everyone can have their phone um, on them for a lot of the time. And so being able to connect with them in that way um, and share more insights into what's going on in the classroom and at school. Uh, that really forms deep connections and increases engagement. We've also heard of many stories where Remind reduces absenteeism and tardiness and builds a stronger school community. And this is probably more relevant to folks um, out, outside the U.S., but even within, as we know, there's lots of languages spoken um, all around. So going back to the theme of access, we've also made Remind available in six languages to date. So it's available in English, both U.S. and U.K. Uh, it's available in Spanish, German, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, and simplified Chinese. Um, so we're starting to see a lot of language and foreign languages teachers uh, use reminds um, in these in these languages, um, but then also, of course, where, where teachers in schools are, are based in other parts of the world, um, you're able to change the language in which you use Remind on the app. Um, and so we're always looking at new languages we can support for the future. And hopefully, uh, next month we'll have um, some even more exciting updates around languages and translation. Uh, the other thing I wanted to call everyone's attention to. Um, and I know I'm biased here, but I have to say the Remind community is absolutely the best. So once you join Remind, you'll be a part of an amazing, passionate network of teachers and leaders. And we have a presence in a lot of different communities out there. Um, online, you know, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook and Pinterest and YouTube. Um, but also important to us, you know, in person. We think those connections are really valuable. And so we launched a program this year called Remind Connected Educators. Um, and three of our panelists today are just that. And uh, these folks seek to make an impact in their communities. Um, so, and they're all kinds of folks. They're teachers, they're coaches, they're tech coordinators, they're principals, they're, they're parent coordinators. You know, they're really uh, involved in so many different things. Um, and this program has really grown in the last couple of months. We have Remind Connected Educators in uh, 42 U.S. states right now. And then we're starting to have RCEs join from around the world. Uh, including Canada, Spain, Pakistan, and Singapore. So we hope this, this program will continue to grow, and we hope that it will be a resource and a platform uh, for even more community building and networking um, and fun um, for, for teachers and, um, and others in education around the world. And the last thing I wanted to call attention to uh, before we hand it over to our panelists. So for back to school this year, Remind really wanted to celebrate teachers. We always love to celebrate teachers, but especially for back to school, we know, you know it's a busy time. Um, and we wanted to call attention to all the small things that you do that make a big difference. So this can be things like high fives, a smile, a word of encouragement you know, with students, with parents, or even with each other. Um, so the hashtag Teach Small is celebrating just this. You know, it's this reminder and celebration of you know, all the small things that make a big impact. Uh, so you can follow along this hashtag on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram to hear how the community celebrates how they teach small. And then we also made a lovely video to celebrate this movement. Um, and you can check it out at remind.com slash teach small. So before we hand it off to our panelists, um, just to kind of recap and get some ideas for your first messages if you're going to try Remind. 
Um, so we've heard, you know, lots of great use cases, and we'll hear some more stories in depth in a minute. Um, but in general, here's some just initial ideas on how you can get started. So sending motivational messages, uh, assignments or tests or event reminders, um, sharing links or documents, um, sharing trivia or asking questions, um, and uh, especially for any last minute changes that happen. You know, we know sometimes inclement weather happens, you know, the buses run late, plans change all the time. Um, so it's really helpful for communicating those updates, um, even if everyone's no longer in the same place together. So with that, um, I'm going to hand it over to Tiffany, and she'll talk about how she's used Remind. Hi, guys. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so my name is Tiffany Tannengeiser. Again, I teach at William Penn High School in Newcastle, Delaware. It is the largest high school in Delaware. Um, it's a Title I school, which means that at least 40% of the students that attend the school are low income. Um, I have 180 students, so most of my classes average at about 30 kids. Um, so that's a little about me. And um, so my biggest question, I started teaching last year, and I wanted to know what I could do to bridge that gap for underprivileged students. Um, with 180 students, it's very hard to, you know, call home every time something happens, good or bad. So I really want to open the line of communication between, you know, the parents, the students, and me. Um, I needed to reach out to students who needed that extra support to be successful, and this chat feature has really helped me with that. And um, the most awesome thing was you don't need a smartphone to sign up. So I have a lot of kids that just have a regular phone with just text features. Um, so they're able to connect with me without having to have an app um, or really anything high tech. Um, the picture that I provided there is actually something that one of my students from last year sent me. So I kept them in my um, Remind class and I sent something out asking them to take a screenshot of what it looks like when they get a message from me. So um, there you can see what it looks like. They can save that number, which is awesome, and they can reply back to anything um, that you send out so long as you open up the chat feature for them. Um, things that I use Remind to do. So um, at the beginning of the year, I send out words of encouragement to my kids for um, their first day. I send out homework reminders. This is something that I schedule ahead of time. So um, we are on a block schedule, which makes it kind of difficult for a lot of our kids. So I see them every other day. So on that off day, what I like to do is um, send them, don't forget to read chapter one. Um, and a lot of kids, I, like Jordan said before, the um, completing homework has gone up. Um, and answering student questions. So I, I teach TAM, which means that I co-teach with a special education teacher. About 50% of the kids in my class are special ed. Um, so having this, you know, like if they have a question about homework, they don't have to worry about, oh, well, I didn't complete it because I didn't understand it. They have this line of communication that's open to. So what my students thought. I also sent out a chat asking my kids, um, reply with what you thought of Remind last year. So here's some things that I included. Um, Kimberly said she loves getting reminders because they helped her stay on track and stay focused. And Andrew said that he likes um, getting texts because they always reminded him that he needed to read or do homework. It made him a better student because he no longer had the excuse that he didn't remember. Um, I had, I would say about 90% of my kids last year signed up. This year, I've created a separate parent account so I can just communicate with parents, whether or not it's starting chats or just um, sending them pictures of their students and what they're doing in class. Um, an awesome story was I had a, a, a student who was really struggling in the class. He was having trouble turning in assignments. And his mom had actually signed up for my class. So um, I opened up a chat. I sent her a picture of him working really hard. And um, she sent me something back saying, like, she was crying because, you know, she feels like a lot of times all she hears are the negatives. And so to get something positive from a teacher was something that really, um, it was a nice change of pace for her. And I'll pass it off to Sean. OK, this is Sean Gaylord. And I am principal, as I mentioned earlier, and lead learner for John F. Kennedy High School, and that is located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And it's a unique school in that we are grades 6 through 12, and we house the LEAP Academy, which is for those students who have, have been retained, and we're trying to get them back on track. And we're also a career and technical education high school. So it's a very unique community. And I'm actually starting my first year there. For the last six years, I was principal and lead learner at Wiley Magnet Middle School, which was up the road. 
And, and one of the things about uh, Remind is I see it as an entry point for, for several things. It is an entry point for building a PLN either within Twitter or within within your school community, um, and it also gives me an opportunity um, to start an entry point for modeling uh, a connected educator. I think it's important for for folks like me in my role in, in school leadership and school administration that that we walk the talk, and and remind has been at least for me, a very effective way to, to model that and, and, and to kind of show that uh, in terms of, you know, we say you've got to integrate technology in your classroom or else. We say this to teachers, but we don't give the tool or we don't model that way. So Remind has been kind of a way for me to, to, to model that. Um, I have used Remind primarily for, for connecting. And, and one of the features of, of Remind and, and, and me kind of modeling this connected educator role is, is the whole coffee EDU phenomenon. Um, I, uh, I'll try to be diplomatic in this. Uh, I am in more meetings than I care to mention. And, uh, and I'm in a lot of staff developments that uh, I find not to be the most meaningful and, and sincere. So I discovered through Remind, they have a wonderful blog uh, feature there, the whole coffee EDU thing. And, and so I was able at my previous school to, to get support from Remind to start a, a coffee EDU. Um, which is basically a mini ed camp, and we got some teachers there to to kind of strategize and brainstorm and and dream, and Remind was able to to uh, pay for the coffee, and and that's that's a really cool thing. Um, I am also a big proponent of of celebrating our educators and. I feel that in, in my role as, as a lead learner and principal, um, I need to encourage and, and do my part to uplift a profession, our profession as educators, which I feel is under attack. So I've used Remind to, to promote Celebrate Monday, hashtag Celebrate Monday, which is a way to kind of uplift the school culture. And I have used Remind to send out um, little shout outs uh, for Celebrate Monday to kind of uplift because my Monday gets gets a bad rap and uh, sometimes we use Monday as an excuse to to be negative so I've used Remind to really send out uplifting messages to send out um, shout outs to, to teachers or even shout outs to our students. Uh, also for, for connecting, I do a, uh, a daily morning memo and I put that on our blog and I've used Remind to send that out to our teachers as, as well. Um, I started off at my previous school. Uh, you'll notice their Wiley chat. I did a school-wide chat and I've used Remind to, to promote and, and to encourage our teachers to participate in that and the Wiley chat kind of exploded a little bit into um, a beyond the school chat and became EdBeat, which is something that I host uh, every Wednesday. And I've used Remind to to send different different promos, uh, different um, updates about about the about the chat, and uh, just different. Uh, I've sent Canvas through that, and and Remind is just again a great tool, a great way to to connect. And uh, you know sometimes I'm not always in the building due due to meetings. So if I if I have a particular thought or or a reflection or or a shout out, it's just been a great way to reach out to to our teachers. I'm getting ready to in our new school or in the school that I'm at, John F. Kennedy High School, to to begin to incorporate our parents into that as as well. And I'm going to start up a parent group to to just send out different updates and I'm also going to use the, the chat feature as well to do maybe an office hour type thing with parents if they've got questions or if they're looking for a way to to connect. So I'm going to do kind of a kickoff at that at uh, one of our parent nights and uh, really looking forward to, to doing that. And we'll take things over to Anthony. Thank you, Sean. Um, 
So my story is going to sound a little different than the last two. I am a high school teacher. I teach at a pre-K through 12 private school in San Jose. But my principal use of Remind is actually as a trip leader. So I, we have a senior trip that we run every year. And we take the entire senior class and we take them down to Laguna Beach for three days, including one day at Disneyland. And when I first took over this job as the senior trip leader, I went to our tech person here at the school, whose name is Diane Main, and I said, how do I keep track of 200 students and 20 chaperones when they're running all over the place? And she said, there's this great new app out there called Remind 101, which is now Remind, and you have to use this. So we sort of piloted it the first year. And it worked so fantastically that now my principal says that uh, it's required for the students to sign up for Remind when we go on this trip. And we actually use it for lots of other trips. So here's how I use this. Um, the best part for me is that I basically can pre-plan all of my messages, or at least maybe 75% of my messages. The trip is already planned out, as most uh, school trips are. So I know in advance what time kids are meeting, where they're meeting, et cetera. And so before we even leave, I type into the Remind uh, system. And I find it's actually easier to do this on my computer, although I can do uh, preset things on my phone as well. And I send out, or pre-send out, uh, all of my text messages. So things like, OK, folks, we're going to be meeting uh, in 15 minutes, I set that up before we even leave. Uh, we leave actually at 6 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And so I set up the night before, hey, folks, reminder, here's the things you need to pack. Don't forget to show up at uh, 5.45 tomorrow morning, et cetera. So all these things are pre-programmed in. And the best part is that the kids all get it because all of our kids get text messages. Um, some of them do sign up for email, but the truth is they all have their phones. It doesn't matter if it's a smartphone or just a regular phone. And the chaperones sign up as well, so they can get those text messages too. And I actually have two groups going on. I have a student group and I have a chaperone group. And normally the chaperones sign up for the student group as well, so they can see both messages. The other thing that I've been really using, especially this last year, is the pictures feature, uh, including in the text. So for example, uh, when we're in Disneyland and we are supposed to meet up, it's very confusing. Disneyland is huge, in case anyone from California has been there, that to try and tell a kid where to meet is tricky. So what I do is I simply include a little picture uh, in the text message that says, OK, we're meeting up now, and here is exactly where you're supposed to meet. Obviously, I have to set this up in advance. I have to get the picture already in advance, but then I send it right off. And then as, if things change, which of course they always do on the fly, um, I can just immediately go into the Remind app and update either a time or just send out a brand new text. Um, I can also, if there's a certain group of kids that I need to hit, I can do that as well. So it's really great for all those sort of um, polling, if you will, of students, just sending it all out at once. The other thing that I've been using it for starting this last year when we've gotten this uh, feedback, not the chat feature, but just the, the little click on feedback like a poll, is if I say something like, hey, folks, we're thinking about having a beach volleyball contest. Uh, please let me know if you're interested. All the student has to do is click on a little star or check mark or whatever little symbol that they want. and I immediately know how many students say that they're interested or not. So it's really great for me to do it, uh, to use Remind that way, just to get in contact with the students. And, and as I said, when I come back from the senior trip, I give a little uh, survey for the, for the students. And we put out a lot of information. There's paper information. We post information at the hotel to let kids know what's going on. But basically, 95% of them say that the Remind app is the number one way that they knew what was happening. Because again, they always have their cell phones with them. They're always checking messages. And so they always know what's happening. 
And while I use this primarily for our senior trip, I actually run several other trips and I use it for that. Our debate teachers use it constantly because whenever we've got students away from the school and yet we want to corral them or just at least pass on information to them when we're not near a computer and they're not near a computer, uh, it's really easy. And again, I really like the feature that nobody knows my cell phone number. So I'm passing this all off to my cell phone, but I'm not worried about a kid ever just individually texting me or doing anything like that with me. And that's my basic story. Awesome. Thanks so much, Anthony, Sean, and Tiffany for sharing your stories. Um, so I guess we're pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, there's lots of questions coming in already, so we're excited to uh, cut to them um, and uh, dive deeper into the tool. Thanks so much, everybody. Yes, I did capture quite a few questions. Let me go back to the top of the list. This might have already been answered, but I'm going to ask it again. How do you know when it's OK to reply to a remind message with a chat and when it's only an, announce an announcement? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, the teacher, when they create their class, they can choose to turn chat on or off in the settings. And this can be done in either the mobile app or on the web at remind.com. Uh, so let's say chat is turned on. So let's say a teacher sends out an announcement. And then um, when the teacher sends out their very first uh, message, there will be instructions. If you're receiving the class messages through text, um, we'll show you how to reply back with chat. Um, there's just a little chat code that you reply with to the class. And then that will start your chat. Now, if the teacher does not have chat turned on, they're not going to see that instruction there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing, when someone has office hours on, um, we'll provide uh, a little warning if you're trying to chat outside of the office hours and say, hey, this is outside of office hours. Are you sure you want to send this message? Uh, so those are just a couple of ways we let someone know whether they can chat or not chat with someone. Great. Let's see. Why no Windows Phone app? Yep, another great question. So uh, we base development of our apps on uh, kind of usage out there in the general public. And so far, we've seen that uh, iOS and Android are kind of the two leading platforms for that. Mm -hmm. uh, with Windows, we've definitely been asked about that before. We know there are folks out there who use Windows Phone, but uh, it's a much smaller amount than compared to iOS or Android. So at this time, uh, we have not uh, worked on a Windows app. Okay. We are working on um, a mobile web version um, that mm -hmm. you can use on um, non-iOS or non-Android phones. So that should hopefully be available later this fall. Good. Uh, how do you get everyone to sign up? How do you let them know about it in the first place? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think our, our panelists can help chime in here. But just some best practices we've seen. So it's, it's really helpful to think about your audience. For students, and I saw like a lot of discussion on this in the chat window, incentives are really powerful. Mm -hmm. So we've seen teachers use that for extra credit. Um, sometimes at the end of the day, like, you know, here's uh, a tip or a tool, um, but you have to sign up for my class in order to get it. Um, or just, you know, be very upfront about the value that they're going to get. You know, mm -hmm. we know a lot of things happen and we know we want to encourage and kind of um, develop your own time management skills and responsibilities. But, you know, if you need those extra nudges and help and, um, you know, be able for me to connect with you more easily, then this is a, a tool for you. And then similar with parents, you know, this gives them just better insight into what's happening day to day in, in this in the classroom and with their kids. Um, and then we've seen teachers use a variety of kind of strategies to get people to sign up. Uh, typically at back to school time, if there's any kind of back to school night or parent teacher night, uh, making some kind of posters with their remind classes and codes so that they can join right on the spot. Um, we've seen folks create little business cards or flyers or handouts so that parents can kind of take them um, and they go home and they can subscribe. Um, we've seen folks use social media, so if they know their parents are really active there on Facebook or on Twitter, um, they'll make sure to post about their Remind classes there. They'll post it on their websites, their blogs. So just thinking about 
where can I reach my audience? Where are they already at? And then what will motivate them uh, to join my class? What do they care about? Do they need more help? Do they need more access? Do they need more resources? Uh, do they want to communicate with me? And then use that to kind of tailor how you get people to join. I don't know if um, our panelists want to chime in on how they've gotten people to subscribe to. I'm, I'm happy to chime in just a little bit and a huge ditto to, to Jordan everything. I mean, there's a lot of creative ideas for that. Um, part of what I just did is, is, is just kind of saturate the, the, the communication line and, and, and create a little bit of buzz, positive buzz. So um, Remind is very good about uh, helping you create um, very simple sign-on directions. I mean, it literally does take 15 seconds. I timed it and, uh, and, and was able to model that. Um, and then you put together a quick PDF. And so I would just start sending little things, little positive messages. And, and other folks would want to, at least teachers would want to would wanna get in on that. Well, what's going on here? What's, what's this all about? Um, and then sign up. Um, but, but you have to really, it's not a one and done. You have to really sustain the, the, uh, the buy-in and, um, and, and really do that and, 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 and get it out there. Um, and, and not get discouraged if not everyone signs up. Uh, people, if, if you build it, they will come. Thanks, Sean. I wanted to and share really quick. If I could share really quick, too. Um, really just explaining to the kids the benefit, like what they can get out of signing up for it. Because I, I just explained, you know, this is a way that you can ask me if you have questions. Um, and, you know, it, it's there for that homework help. And I had a kid say, why doesn't every teacher use this? Um, so they really understand and they see the value in it as well. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, for us, whenever I'm having a pre-planning meeting, when all the students are together, I just tell them, okay, everybody take out your phone and I want you to text the following code to uh, this number. Um, and nobody actually mentioned it, but you can make up your own at code, which is fantastic. So, uh, so it's really easy to remember. It's not like you're typing in some random code. Um, and the kids just do it. They're just so used to doing this sort of thing that I say, okay, everybody take out your phone and send this message, and they all do it. Um, and, and then if some, I mean, some will not, maybe, uh, 10 or 15% won't, but as soon as they see their friends uh, getting the messages, then they sign up too. So it, it really does just a build on itself, and it's very easy uh, for them as teenagers to get connected, much more so than I think the adults who feel a little bit weary. The students do not feel weary about this at all. Great. Go ahead, Sean. One, one thing um, that, that um, both Tiffany and Anthony kind of echoed that, that re really struck a good chord to me is, is really explaining the purpose, the why, and, and, and putting it out there. I mean, I, I, as I shared with our team at, at, uh, at Kennedy in, in my previous school, I want to connect. I, I, you know, I, I, I want to... Um, I want us to connect with each other. This is the purpose. So that, that's really important, uh, is explaining and being very clear and transparent about, about the purpose. Because from my, from my standpoint as, as a principal and lead learner, I'm that guy that's always adding something to the plate. I'm trying not to. So um, it's really important uh, for those principals and administrators out there, or if if, if you are a teacher and you're trying to convince your principal or, or administrator to, to do this, really stress the, the, the clarity, really stress the transparency, but most importantly, stress the purpose. And this is a way to, to connect and to stay connected and to stay in tune for what's doing best for our kids and, what's, and, and, and to do it also what's best for our, our teachers who, who are on the front lines. Great, Sean. Uh, go ahead, Lucy. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lucy Gray, and I'm doing outreach in Illinois for Remind. So if you need anything, let me know. Um, but I also wanted to talk about an idea that I got from Lisa Dabbs, who is doing outreach in California. Uh, she has a group for new teachers, I believe, for her new teacher chats. A lot of the online chats are using Remind. I know EdChat is, for instance. 
um, to post, you know, links to polling questions and things like that. Um, what I'm doing with another project I work on, which is called the Global Education Conference, I am creating a remind group and uh, posting a global ed resource of the day and then also a link to something that's going on in our community. And you can embed that um, on a website. So <clears throat> if you go to globaleducationconference.com, you'll see on the front page um, my remind group embedded right on the front of that. And so uh, it's just another way of giving a visual to this to people if you want to make it a little bit more public as well. Um, I'm also starting a group for Illinois educators to share kind of Illinois specific things, but also um, ideas and resources related to innovations as well. So I'll post those links again if anybody wants to, to look at them. Um, and then finally, you know, I, I post to these every morning. It's kind of the start of my day. And I'm finding it very easy just to open up, um, you know, a couple of resources in Evernote where I have things bookmarked and then look through them and then post them to my remind group really quickly. And, uh, and it's a good way to start the day. So anyway, just wanted to share those ideas. That's great, Lucy. There are some other questions that I have here. Um, if you use this at an elementary school, I've got to get the rest of the question. <laughs> The, the chat jumped. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. I think we could probably, I think I saw that question before too. Okay. So, but yes, we definitely see um, all age levels uh, using Remind. Um, mm -hmm. I think for the elementary crowd, it's more common to use Remind with parents since uh, you know, the younger kids may not have phones yet. Right. Um, and then for high school, it's kind of the opposite. So now that the kids are getting more kind of um, Older and you know taking on more responsibility and independence, uh, we see teachers use Remind directly with uh, the high school students. I see. Okay. So, for example, in elementary, uh, I think we've seen it more if we're sharing with parents, like what's going on in the classrooms, and, and sharing reminders and updates. Um, and then in the high school setting, uh, you know, it can be used even more as a learning tool um, for for students to. Um, you know, study for certain things or, or do tests and forms and, and quizzes uh, with Remind when, uh, no matter where they're at, if they're at school or at home. That's great. A teacher asked, should she make a second group for Spanish-speaking parents? Yeah, that's a, a great question. And yes, we've definitely seen teachers create, you can create um, up to 100 classes now in Remind, so you can definitely create them for different groups and audiences, and um, you know, all see it in one place. So, um, and especially on the multiple languages front. Uh, so, mm -hmm. as we said before, um, the app is available in six languages, including Spanish. Um, but uh, we're also hearing about translations a lot, and uh, that's been on our radar for some time. Um, and hopefully, we'll have an update about that uh, in the fall. Great. Uh, is there an age requirement, like for some other internet sites? Yeah, great question. So when the student signs up, we ask for their birth date. And if they're under 13, um, we will uh, ask for parental permission mm -hmm. um, to use the app. Um, but if you're over 13, then um, and that's the standard uh, benchmark for similar sites and applications out there. Right. So we do ask for that. Yeah. Good. Um, does this work like WhatsApp or Viber? Good question. Oh, and I saw another question on the age question. So if you're mm -hmm. Um, looking to become a teacher, then uh, then yeah, the the age is 18 there. But uh, for students, though, um, technically any age. It's just if you're under 13, though, um, we'll want you know parent kind of consent on using the app. Um, right. Sorry, what was the other question you just asked? It was um, oh, does this simply work like WhatsApp, oh, WhatsApp or Viber? There we go. 
Yeah, great question. So uh, Brett, one of our co-founders, has kind of coined the phrase, it's like WhatsApp for education. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so easy kind of mobile messaging or texting. Uh, but the key benefit here is that it's, uh, you don't have to share your numbers. You don't, we, we hide that from people. Um, so, so when you create your Remind class, um, people are not accessing your personal phone number and then you're never going to see theirs. Um, whereas mm -hmm. with us WhatsApp, I believe um, you still can see people's numbers. Good. How are you managing multiple groups? Does it look like texting groups? Yeah, so in the Remind app, when you log in, uh, you basically see a list of your classes or groups, and so you can click on each one to uh, send out a message, see what you've already sent before, um, and then you can always toggle back between your classes, um, either on the mobile app or on the web dashboard. And then uh, with mm -hmm. chats, um, it's uh, more by individual, so you can type in someone's name, um, and then we'll auto-complete that for you, and that's based off of people that are in your classes or at your school. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Um, this teacher thought maybe he could set it up for his sophomore class. He's a sponsor along with another teacher. Can it be set up so the sponsors and class officers can send out messages about meetings, events, etc.? Yeah, great question. We saw that. So absolutely. Um, right now, today, uh, we can only have one um, owner of a class at a time, uh, mm -hmm. but a workaround is you can use a shared account. So, um, mm -hmm. and I think Carla showed a great example, uh, but basically, you know, create, you know, either a standard Gmail account or Yahoo, whatever you like, and then just share the credentials for that account, and mm -hmm. you'll use that to sign up with Remind, and then that way, anyone can log into that account and send out messages to that one group. So that's the workaround today. But we have heard of this request, having multiple teachers or administrators or whoever need to send messages out to the same group. Um, and we're working on that right now. So hopefully we should have an update on that very soon. Um, stay tuned. Great. I think they were the questions I was able to capture. Cool. I just wanted to address uh, another thing I saw come up in the chat quite a bit. So mm -hmm. um, definitely great questions on what if you know, my students or parents or even myself, if I don't have a cell phone, a smartphone, or mm -hmm. a regular phone. Uh, so it's definitely still possible to use Remind, even without a phone. Um, you can sign up on the web at Remind.com. You can create your classes. You can invite people. Um, and then for students and parents, um, there's, there's a special link if they just want to join uh, through email updates. Um, you mm -hmm. can invite them um, through email instead. So, so we definitely make it possible for you to use Remind if you do not have a phone. Um, and another thing we're going to work, uh, work on very soon, so right now today, either a teacher or a student or parent can install the app and sign, it, sign up and use it. Um, on the web right now, um, only teachers can sign up for Remind. Uh, but we're definitely working on uh, student and parent sign up on the web too. So I'll make it even easier for them uh, to you know, subscribe and join any classes and, and get their messages uh, that way. Oh, and then the process for 13 and under. So when um, a student signs up um, on the app right now, we'll ask for their birth date. And then if we see that birth date means they're under 13, at some point uh, we will ask the parent for uh, consent that they're using the app. Terrific. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up now. <laughs> and thanks so much to our panel today, our extensive panel. Um, Jordan, Tiffany, Sean, and Anthony. And their um, contacts are here on this, this slide. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will either <laughs> rethink our panel as well as um, tell us about upcoming shows. 
Thank you all so much for sharing with us today. I just feel like we're so much better informed about Remind now. And I know that there are lots of us that are going to want to be sharing out this recording with teachers and parents back at our own school community so that they will see the power of this tool. So thank you for sharing. And we hope you'll maybe consider coming back and joining us joining us for a future webinar. We won't have a webinar next weekend because that is the Labor Day holiday weekend in the United States. But following that, on September 12th, we have Matt Miller joining us as our September featured teacher. And you may know him as the author of Ditch That Textbook. Amazing guy. And you'll love hearing from him. September 19th. We'll be featuring the K-12 online conference and telling you all about how you can join and participate in that free conference in October. And September 26th, we're going to be sharing about eCyber Mission. So I hope you'll join us for all of those. And Lori, I'll let you just quickly take us out. Thanks, Peggy. The Lori Revolution is Steve Hargadon's latest project. He's gathered all PD that he hosts at one place, including the Host Your Own Webinar. You can sign it up for a Blackboard Collaborate room as long as you make the session public, and it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher by using this form. It's also a tab in the Resources section in the Live Finder. As you leave the session, you should get a page where the survey opens. Or you can take this link or the link in the chat. There's also a tab in the Live Binder. When you open the survey, at the very bottom, you can request a professional development certificate, which will print out your name when you get it back. But please use a personal email address for this rather than a school email. The school addresses tend to block this from arriving in your inbox. The archives are available at iTunes U, both video and audio. Also, as RSS feeds, if you still use RSS feeds, as well as the full recordings on the website. So special thanks again to our special guests, Jordan Pedraza and panel, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in today's show. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>